Welcome, everyone. We're here to celebrate the life of Shireen Irani, Mayor Baba's mother. And uh, we're going to open this morning with Jim Meyer singing a song called Oh Mary for Jesus' mother. And I think you'll get the gist of the song as he goes on. So welcome. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Son Jesus can never die, he lives in all hearts reborn. O oh, Doug Dover, do not mourn, O oh, Doug Dover, do not cry. Your son Zoroaster is the fire of love, and he can never die. O oh, Kashalya, do not weep. O oh, Kashalya, do not grieve. Your son Rama is alive and well in the hearts of all who believe. Mahamaya shed no tears. Oh, Mahamaya, do not cry. Your son, Buddha, has transcended death, and he can never die. Oh, Devaki, do not fear. Oh, Devaki, do not weep. Your son Krishna is eternally alive, arisen from illusions, dream of sleep. And oh, Amina, don't be sad. Oh, Amina, do not cry. Your son Mohammed has merged in Allah, and he can never die. Shireen, do not cry, oh Shireen, do not moan. Your son Meher can never die, he lives in the hearts of his own. I said, oh Shireen, do not cry, oh Shireen, do not moan. Your son, Meher, can never die. He lives in the heart of his own. Beautiful, Jim, always. Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Hmm. All right. We have Miss Karen with a bio for us today. Say Baba. Say Baba. The information that I got for the bio for Shireen Mai came from this booklet, which was put together by the um, <clears throat> Bombay group. And there's also another booklet on Shariarji. 
So, and also some of the information and dates are from Tony Zoyce's travel blog. Okay. So she was born in 1878 in Bombay. Her parents were Dorab and Gulandun. She had one sister, Daula. She married Sheriar Mundagar Irani. She had nine children. Jamshed was the first, then Merwan, Baram, Jal, Adi Jr., and Mani. There was someone, a, a babe called Shimund, who died at seven months. Jahangir died when he was two. And there was a daughter, Franey, who died of the plague as a small child in 1902. She passed on Baba's birthday, February 25th, 1943 in Pune. Her parents were followers of the Zoroastrian faith and they fled religious persecution in Persia with their three-year-old daughter, Daula. By the time they reached Bombay, Golandun, who was pregnant, gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Shireen. Shireen's name means sweet beauty. When Shireen was a few weeks old, the family relocated to Pune, where many Iranis and Parsis had settled. And later on, as I read, Shireen loved Pune, but not Bombay. She was not happy with that. Her father opened a small tea shop in Pune. Her mother had a kind, loving, and friendly nature. She was well-loved and quite intelligent. When she was five years old, she began her elementary schooling at the home of an Irani family, which clearly she walked to to get there. At this time, Sheriar, who had been a dervish, came to Pune. He had wandered for 18 years in Iran and India in his search for God. Sheriar had heard a divine voice saying to him a son would be born. His sister, Perosia, who he was living with when he arrived in Pune, begged him to marry, settle down, and have a family. In exasperation, one day he saw a five-year-old girl with ribbons in her hair pass by the door. He said, all right, if I ever marry, I will marry that girl. Otherwise, I will not marry at all. He thought this impossible and felt relieved. Her mother, Goland, Go, Golandun, and his sister, Perosia, were good friends. Perosia begged, begged, and begged her friend to agree to her brother Sheriar's marriage to young Shireen. Golandun's tender and loving heart was moved by her friend's plights, and she promised. In those days, there was an unwritten code that once a promise is given, it should be carried through. Shireen's father, Darabji, raged and raved. Shireen, then five years old, was engaged to be married to a man 25 years her senior, Sheriar. After nine years of engagement, they were married, according to the Zoroastrian custom, in 1892. Sheriar was 39. She was 14. Her father, Darabji, did not attend the wedding. By the time they got married, Sheriar had established himself in business. In 1893, Shireen was 15 and had their first child, Jamshed. She did not feel maternal. She was quite young at that time. And he ended up being raised by her older sister, Dowler, and Dowler's husband, Faradun. Her, a few months after Jamshed was born, she became pregnant once again. This time, she felt the natural joy of motherhood. She would often have wonderful dreams. Sheriar recollected the divine voice, knew that the child was going to be he whom you seek, he whom you wish to serve. His attainment is not destined for you. Your son, it is your son who will attain it, and through your son, you. Early morning, Sunday, February 25th, 1894, Shireen Mai was at the David Sassoon Hospital in Pune, and she had a vision. 
she saw a glorious person like the sun sitting in a chariot and his cool brilliance pervaded the atmosphere. Her mother, after hearing about the vision said, a very auspicious son will be born to you. His name will spread all over the world. Thousands of people will, be, will carry him in grand possessions processions as you dreamt. He'll be given special reverence and honor. Sheriar was outside the room taking the name of Yezdan. Shreemai's father, Darabji, had been so opposed to the daughter's marriage, he had actually forbidden Sheriar to visit their home. However, after Merwan was born, he had a change of heart and he would go visit the infant Merwan every single day day. Gradually, he began looking upon Sheriar with love and respect. One day in 1912, Marwan's inner sight opened. Shireen thought he had a dizzy spell. She wanted him to become a doctor, lawyer, or engineer, become rich, travel abroad, marry, and have a family. Her hopes were shattered in May 1913 when young Merwan, then 19, while cycling his way to college, was beckoned and embraced by Hazrat Babajan, whose spiritual duty was to unveil Merwan and reveal his identity to him. Babajan repeated, my beloved son, his individual consciousness was merging with the ocean of bliss. Marwan walked home transformed. He lost all interest in studies, was indifferent to sports or games, could not concentrate, was unable to communicate. Sheriar understood but remained silent. The only thing Marwan did for the next seven months was to visit Babajan and sit for her, at her side for hours on end. One night in January 1914, she kissed him on the forehead. She declared, this is my beloved son. He will one day shake the world and all of humanity will be benefited by him. The next morning, Shireen was stunned to find her Merag lying motionless, staring outward. She was extremely worried when he remained in this coma-like condition for three days. He began to move on the fourth day. They called the best physicians. For the following nine months, Merwan lived without sleep and without eating any solid food. He began banging his head. Shireen wept bitterly. Her hopes and dreams for Marag, her son Marag were shattered. Merwan began visiting saintly persons and places of pilgrimage. He would not tell his mother as this would disturb her, but he confided in his maternal aunt, Paroja, who was in fact Pendu and Naja's mother. Shireen still wanted him to get a job, get married, not waste his life visiting saints and holy men. At that time, World War I was in full force. Merwan, so exasperated, told her he was going to join the army. Hearing this, she became fearful and subsided in her demands. Every month, Merwan would visit Sai Baba and then stay with Upasni at the Kandoba Temple at Shirdi. After 1917, Upasni established his ashram at Sikori. Merwan would visit him there. He was held in high reverence as Upasni's prime disciple. When in Pune, he continued to visit Babajan nightly. Shireen, on the other hand, continued to push him to get a job. Against his wishes and because of her constant pressure, he accepted a job with a well-established brick contractor in Pune. When asked to do something unethical, he quit. He actually was a school teacher for a few months. She convinced Sheriar to involve Merwan in his toddy business. There was a boy named Matho hired to fetch Merwan's afternoon meals and bring them to the toddy shop. He became one of Shireen Mai's spies. And I think Jal also was one of the brother Jal also was a spy to let Shireen know what Merwan was up to. 
Marwan would sneak away to meet Upazni. While in Pune, he would visit Babajan. Shireen had to bear the brunt of her neighbor's slanderous remarks. At one point, Shireen and her mother went to confront Babajan. Babajan muttered, Marwan will shake the world. He will awaken the world. Soon, Shireen's mother, Golandun, and Mabajan began reminiscing about the old days in Persia. Much to Shireen Mai's chagrin, they began singing in Persian and swapping stories. Several times they sent the mother, Golandun, to Babajan, but they, each time they ended up reminiscing about Persia. Babajan said, why do you worry about him? He is now out of your hands. There was nothing Shireen could do. Upazni did the same thing Babajan did. He would shift the conversation so Shireen would forget to inquire about Merwan. He told her how fortunate she was to be mother of the universe. On one visit, Maharaj introduced her to Golmai Irani from Aminagar, Adi's and Rustam's mother. He said, make friends with her and cool your temper. He kept changing the conversation and told her not to miss her train. She felt deceived again. Golmai Irani was Baba's spiritual mother. Both women were jealous of each other and both also had to face the onslaught of the outside world. Shireen could not control her distress, so she went to Kedjgaon to plead with Narayan Maharaj. He received her with great respect and told her, Dear woman, you are very, very fortunate. Your son is Jagat Narayan, the Lord of the universe, and you yourself will be adored in time to come as the mother of the entire universe. Have patience. Everything will soon be all right. One day you will see who your son really is. She was comforted but not fully consoled, nor did she understand his remarks. Then she returned to Upazni, wanting Merwan to return home, marry, and have a family. Maharaj said, go back home. He wants to stay with me. He embraced her and gently said, I bow to your love for Merwan. When she returned home, her heart was broken. She returned to Sikori, same thing. She actually suffered a nervous breakdown and her health deteriorated. She stayed in bed and was disconsolate. Weeks passed with no sign of recovery. Sheriar thought she might die. One day while she was sleeping, Sheriar saw the door open by her bedside and two figures approached her bed. One resembled Merwan, the other Sai Baba. Afterwards, she awoke and for the first time in weeks, spoke clearly, asked for water. She became well and normal again. After Marwan began, began to be recognized as Meher Baba, she too started looking up to him reverentially. Sheriar died on March 24th, 1932. After his death in April, 1932, Shireen Mai and Mani came to Baba to discuss family matters. Shireen wanted Mani to stay with her in Pune and eventually to marry. Mani longed to stay with Baba for good. Baba suggested to Mani that she become rude and disrespectful to her mom. This was very difficult for her, but it worked. Shortly after her 14th birthday in 1932, Mani joined Baba's ashram in Nasik. Shireen was not happy about it. The situation wasn't completely resolved since she actually went ahead with plans to arrange Mani's marriage. There was a terrific row over it. Um, and Mani ended up having a skin condition. She did return home, the skin condition became worse. Finally, Shireen said, let her be with the six women, Mandali. And she finally did join the ashram permanently. But Baba asked Shireen if she had a daughter-in-law with her, would she be happy? 
To this, she agreed. Baba asked his brother Baram to get married. This was difficult for Baram, but in March 1933, he married Perin, who was chosen by Shireen Mai. Shireen had to live with the fact that many in Pune were saying cruel words about the women in Baba's ashram. Before Shireen would arrive at the ashram, Baba would instruct everyone to accommodate her requests within reason. Baba gave the duty of looking after her to Gai Mai, Erich's mother. Shireen was fond of a tasty dish, it was fish dish, fried pomfrets. Even though fish was forbidden in the ashram, she asked Gai Mai to get some for her. Gai Mai was confused because she had an order to whatever Shireen wanted to do. So she went and had the fish delivered to the vegetarian ashram. But Baba smelled the fish and a row ensued. While they were quarreling, a sneaky cat came and stole the fish. On another occasion, Shireen Mai wanted fried eggplant, but Baba always said eggplant was not good for anyone. So Manu, Erich's sister, was secretly carrying up the stairs when who did she meet but Baba? He ate each one of the eggplants. At Baba's 43rd birthday in February 1937, Shireen showed deference to her son. She still wanted him to get married. But then a, she, in um, moving along, a few days before she got ill, and this was February 1943, she had a dream of her impending death. She dreamt a red horse had forced its way into her house and room. This is an old Irani belief. On Sunday, the 21st of February, 1943, Shireen fell and suffered a brain hemorrhage. She was rushed to the hospital, but the doctor said she would not survive. She was brought home on February 25th, 1943. Baba's birthday. Still unconscious, she passed away that night at 9.40 p.m. It was Baba's 49th birthday. Baba received a telegram of her passing. Her funeral was held the next day and her body brought to the Tower of Silence. Gai Mai, who was standing beside Shireen Mai at the last, clearly saw a stream of tiny golden hands emerge from Shireen's nostrils and hover over her, over her like butterflies, lastly followed by a full-sized pair. These golden hands all circled over Shireen before they slowly floated up and away out of sight. Baba's final remark was, she is now freed. When he returned to Pune two days later, he entered the family home and told his brothers and sister-in-law, Memo has come to me and is now fully in bliss. She helped me so much in my work, and after playing her part, she has come to me. She was an exceedingly adventurous woman and extremely fearless. Now I'm going to say a few words that were said by others about Shireen. I'm going to start with Mani. Mani remarked, my heart would often go out to mother. She endured a lot for the sake of her son, who she loved above all, the son she referred to as my most beautiful child. Being God's mother is no joke. By her son's grace, mother played her role well. Sherry R. Um, Mani recounts, I love to see my parents sit together in the evening reading the Shah Nama, Persian history. Sheriar taught Shireen to read and write Persian. She learned much of Hafez by heart. She had to be practical. Mani groaned, oh, my poor mother, having a dervish for a husband and God for a son and having to raise a big family. She had to be practical. 
because her husband would give money and things away to anyone in need. She loved Puna. Puna is a corner of heaven, she would say. She had a good sense of humor and loved to talk. There were no cinemas in Puna, but she never missed a good play. She didn't know much English. She was sharp-witted with innate intuition and keen intelligence. She loved to travel. If a train left at 7 p.m., she was there at 5.30 p.m. If rent was due on the 1st, she paid it on the 28th. Later in her life, she had to be carried in a lift chair. From Norina Machiavelli, she said, Shireen had dignity in her bearing and speech. Even when asleep, Shireen is a queen. Here's what Mara said about her. And she said, and Mani had said, Shireen, my love Mara and was nice to her. Mara too shared a deep bond of love with her. Mara observed, Shireen might could be strict and bossy, but at times and at times become upset. But most of the time she was very loving. She had a very keen eye and was quick to judge someone and to tell Baba what she thought. I thought it was really nice that they had a very nice relationship. And here's what Shireen Mai said. Of being the avatar's mother, Shireen said, never be the avatar's mother. It is a miserable existence. Haven't you seen my plight? How outsiders insult me and do not let me live in peace. But on the other hand, here's what she also said. Wherever the royal elephant roams in the forest, the name of its owner will always be known. The elephant may wander, but everyone will recognize the one who owns it and give that person respect. As Baba was her son, her name would always be remembered and appreciated. And here's what Meher Baba said. At one time... Okay, wait, can you read? Baba had great respect for his mother and loved her dearly. Baba declared later that Shireen Mai was of great help in his spiritual work. Now Memo is quite happy and free of worldly ties. Baba ordered a memorial for Sheriar and Shireen on Maribad Hill, and this work was carried out in June 1943. When the memorial was ready, Baba, with his own hands, placed a few of their personal effects in it. Sherry Archie's silver snuff box and Shireen Mai's eyeglasses. Baba dictated the inscription on their tombstone. In eternal memory of Meher Baba's blessed parents, Sherry Archie and Shireen Mai, who are now merged in Baba's infinity. Say Baba. And I'll also add that each year on Baba's birthday, Mani would place a garland on their memorial. Say Baba, Karen. Beautiful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah, that was that was wonderful. I there were things there I had certainly did not know about Baba's mother. Um, Judy, I was going to show a little video and then and then people could speak if that's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, just wanted to get some, uh, just get a little, get some photos of, of Shireen. This is Baba's Gujarati Arti, which we do daily in Baba's room. Buja will not a jalatani karakuda ratne farma to chalagi ashabatone ke bakshe nure matu. I am Shad Meher Baba Charanap Tujnathariye Sar Khudana 
zatati vakef thai be to meher batu tu che ma le khaki katano tu ashe bine arif bhi tu che dari ya ye wahedat mare fatano ho hi tu fatu amor hai ravne ai sale khashte gyan hi zadnu ke tu par mat ma gnani chane muk tyare irfa tu khuda na prem no pyalo pilavi mast ham ne kar che tujhe par jaan sad ke sa kiya pe de pay ma tu hamari nav bhar dariye tarave to hame tariye hamara na khuda ai mer baba chane ke ba tu bujave na jalatani ekar kud ratne parma tu chalagi aash bhakto ne ke bakshe nure imatu pila ved avtar mer baba ki jay अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय 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 मेहर बाबा की जय मेहर बाबा की जय अवतार 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 मेहर बाबा की जय बोलो बाबा की जय मेहर बाबा की जय बोलो बाबा की जय मेहर बाबा की जय बोलो मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा बोलो मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय 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 बोलो मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा बोलो मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय बोलो मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा मेहर बाबा अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय
difficulties there. All right. Um, I know Judy had her hand up, so I think she had something to add. Judy, go ahead. Yeah, Jay Baba, everyone. And thank you, Karen, for your beautiful bio. Um, I happen to be present a number of times, several, many times, um, in Mondeley Hall or on Maris Porch or elsewhere, when someone would ask Moni about her mother, Shireen, and Moni would stop the person in mid-sentence every single time and sort of stand up a little straighter and say, my mother was the mother of God. She is to be known as Shireen Mai. She would emphasize that honorific um, for mother, which is Mai. Um, and she said, and she would do exactly the same thing with her father, Shiri or G, uh, if, because people so often ask about Shiri -er, and she would stop the mid sentence and say, he was the father of the avatar of this age. Show him the respect to always, always say Shiri or G. Um, and she did not use her sweet voice when telling the individual, and it didn't matter who it was. She was consistent every time I ever observed that. And um, sometimes she would uh, expand and talk about um, the greatness of her parents and the role that they played in the advent of the avatar of the age as the mother of the avatar and the father of the avatar um, and emphasize what a, a great and essential role that was. Um, and so I actually, when I first saw, I think I got a something in my email saying, you know, highlights of the week and it was noted, you know, and I thought, Oh, Shireen, Shireen and Ronnie. Oh, that must be um, uh, Baba's there. It's going to be a meeting about Baba's niece, um, Shireen and Ronnie, who later when she got married, became Shireen Bonner, because it literally never occurred to me that this meeting about Shireen and Ronnie would be about Shireen Mai uh, it, until you know, it's like I was starting to put it on my calendar and I looked up on the details and realized it, oh, it's Baba's mother that the meeting's about. Because Moni had been so adamant and consistent that, that the mother of the avatar in this great advent is Shireen Mai and the father, his father is Shiri or G. And G is the honorific at the end of um, so I, I felt nudged by Bob to, to share this, this with folks. And, and, and Moni would also, remembering back to some of my memories of her sharing about her own mother, she emphasized the pain that her mother experienced um, in so many different ways, one of which was being, and, and Karen, you, you you beautifully touched on these points already, but um, th that um, that the whole Parsi community uh, pushed her away uh, and was and and was very you know they were very cruel to her um, because of her son calling himself you know. God or having a, you know, having disciples around and so forth. They, they were, um, she had a lot of um, rejection and, and, and sometimes direct abuse um, 
to her face verbally and so forth. Um, and yeah, that was something that Monty many times spoke about was the pain that her mother, how difficult it was for her to be in that role. And for me personally, uh, I think most or many, many of, or, or all of you know of Monty's beautiful book about her childhood time with, with Baba. And for me, the, of all the stories in there that touch my heart the most is the day that Monty came home from school and she said, you know, oh yes, we always, you know, I was very grateful to so-and-so that had died because we had a holiday that, or got out early from school that day. And her mother, she found her mother in front of a cupboard that had always been locked and she had no idea what was in it. And her mother was sitting on a stool in front of that cupboard and she was taking out, she had on her lap some of Baba's clothes that he had worn in earlier years. And she was taking them out. Perhaps one of the, one of the close women had asked for them. Um, and she was, she was crying and she, Mommy realized she was just a young girl that it was the moment when Shireen Mai was giving up her most precious son to the world in the action of giving the clothes that she'd kept so preciously for so many years and sharing them with others. And um, to me, that's so touching about the incredible uh, generosity and selflessness that she had to, um, that she lived and exhibited in um, being the avatar's mother. And I think of, for myself, since I was raised Christian, I think of you know, Mary at the foot of Jesus's cross when he was being crucified and, and the, you know, that, uh, you, you know, or Michelangelo's um, Pieta with, you know, Christ's body over her lap. The, the, the role of the mother of the avatar it's for me unfathomable and for that we need to rejoice and and respect jay baba jay baba judy thank you for bringing up shireen mai that's very important i'm grateful that you said that thank you yeah Did you have something? Yeah. So first of all, um, thank you, Karen. It was so beautiful and so inclusive and with so much love. And um, of course, we see <laughs> your videos. Uh, always so beautiful. And the photos, some of them I never saw. So really nice. And nice that you started it with the family, with all the sons and 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 also Katie singing, so uh, Katie and Baba's song. So thank you, Judy, also for your beautiful um, addition. So um, cleaning the shrines uh, brings uh, one really close to the women because when you do that, you think of them each time you clean one of them. You think of them. You think of them. You so I was also cleaning the parents' um, shrines and um, it was very, very special to do so. The parents and um, the Western uh, Mandali there on uh, Baba's uh, side. So um, it's really a very, and, and Gulmais and 
and Keiko Shou's uh, daughters also. So it's, it's really very special to do that. Um, so I have great love for Shirin Ma especially. <laughs> Last year, I think they had a play up and the play was very, very beautiful uh, in Zoom. Uh, very, very beautiful. All the difficulties that she had bringing up a son like she did and uh, going through what she went, she went through. And everyone who has uh, um, a child uh, would know how difficult, <laughs> how difficult it is to bring up children and when they're not gone, so can you imagine bringing so many <laughs> and one of them being a god. So um, she had wit, she had wit like Mani did, she had wit like uh, Baba did. And they all had the same quick mind and the quick tongue and the quick uh, ability. Um, so uh, she was very sparkling too. And she was very courageous because uh, she knew that Babajan was either a, a witch or or very the high soul, and she knew that uh, Upasni Maharaj was a very high soul considered to be, and still she went out there to fight with him, <laughs> to fight over her son. So she was really courageous because uh, going to such personalities and um, going into a fight with them can be very detrimental, and uh, they really buried it because uh, she was the mother of uh, their most love, uh, loved uh, avatar, but he was, and they understood her love, they understood her love also. So she was very courageous and daring. And she also, uh, in, all, in all that she did, she was courageous. So one day um, this, um, um, fr her friends who ostracized her and she was before that she was the belle of the party so it's not only that she, they ostracized her it was that it was completely opposite to what it was before because she was a beautiful lady and she was highly regarded in the society and very much accepted and they loved her and she was considered very beautiful and suddenly it's whoops uh, they're ostracizing her so um one day they all uh, bought tickets to go to, um, um, I don't know if it was Anna Pavlo Pavlova dance or something, something very um, rare in Bombay. And she heard about it and she heard that they all got, uh, got this and they kept it from her. So she went and she bought the best tickets that she can uh, up front. <laughs> and she went there just to show that no one can put her down. And uh, so, and, and she never had any money. So it was really an ordeal. So this was the lady that um, gave birth to the avatar, who's also daring. And he had to be daring also to be the avatar because he, he took upon himself so much. So um, yeah. Uh, another thing is, yes, that was mentioned that she was the, on, the only one in the family grounded enough to, uh, to handle the affairs of the family <laughs> because Sherry R.G. kept giving his blankets and one mm -hmm. day she told him um, every time because when he stayed in the tea shop at night she would give him a blanket so he won't be cold so he used to give it to someone who was out there colder than he was. And she said, if we would have kept all the blankets that you gave away, we would have had <laughs> a manufactory of, or a shop full of blankets. So um, I really like this lady and I like her more uh, as years go by. Um, she's very special and I'm very thankful um, to her to be um, the mother of the avatar. Thank you. Thank you, Shireen. Shireen Mai. Thank you, Michal. Yeah, great stories that you remembered. <clears throat> Thanks for bringing those forward. Mahu, oops, you're... Yeah. yeah. Hi, good morning. Um, I don't have much to share, but uh, oftentimes I uh, thought about the, the position that Shirin Mai was in. But before I say that, I'd like to share that every person in... Um, Baba's life, Mayor Baba's life, and uh, as an avatar of the age, and uh, um, 
you know, the connection that they had with him played an special role. Uh, I always thought Shirin Mai was chosen um, because she was very strong. She was direct, she was dedicated, uh, faithful and so forth. And um, I don't know, a lot, a lot of people would play this role uh, for her. I mean, uh, for, for to be the mother of the avatar. Um, but really thinking about that, the, the position that she was in, because I'm a mother myself, I mean, um, from one side, she was a mother and she had so much love for her son. And uh, from the other side, she soon realized that uh, her, her son is not an extraordinary person, he's not an ordinary individual and he's extraordinary. And one after another, Baba was creating an episode um, that would shock her and confront her with her, you know, pre-notion, pre-notions and of the concept that she had in her mind and so forth. Um, but I really think through all of that, uh, Baba provided a spiritual training for her and how lucky uh, she could be, you know, as, as a soul uh, to, to be the mother of Avatar and to go through that rough road that she did go and toward the end, Baba liberated her, you know. She's liberated, Mukti. She got Mukti and she doesn't have to come back anymore. Of course, Muktis only get infinite blessed. They don't get infinite power and infinite knowledge like a God realized soul. Um, but it's still, you know, Baba paid, uh, her, paid uh, his respect to her and what she did. But overall, uh, you know, with her, uh, with her kind of behavior and kind of uh, take that she had, that, so she could be misunderstood, right? I mean, by people who were surrounded Baba and so forth, thinking that, oh, how ignorant she could be. She doesn't realize that you are not to break a rule and you are not to, you are to obey the master. After all, he's the master and so forth. But this position that she was in, that she has to uh, swing between the motherhood and the spiritual being was not an easy task, I would think. So for that, I really uh, bow down to her. And, and I think uh, she played a fantastic, extraordinary role on that. For example, when uh, Mervan was disappeared for seven years, for seven years, uh, while he was, uh, uh, you know, under training with Upazni Maharaj, finally she made her way to Sakuri, <laughs> and and then first Baba was not visible, and he was, uh, you know, under work, you know, doing spiritual work and so forth. So finally he came, and he she could not believe her eyes, because while Baba was doing a very long fasting. And he was, he lost so much weight. He was frail. He was uh, so thin and so forth. So as a mother, and when I see my son in that position, I say, oh my God, what, what have you done to yourself? You see, uh, and, but then, you know, eventually I'm sure she, it did create question in her mind, despite of her motherhood and perhaps through the, this travel and the road that she, went through and traversed Baba as being God realized that she's ready. She's ready to get liberation and be freed from this world of illusion. And he gave it to her so generously. So I'm grateful to know she didn't mind. Jay Baba. <laughs> Jay Baba. That's wonderful, Mahu. Thank you. Yes, I, I do salute the spirit of that woman. That was Baba's mother, Shireen Mai. She had that feisty nature that speaks to me. So I am um, grateful for all the stories that everybody's bringing. 
All right. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to to say, to offer? It's noon. It's Baba time. We can all dress our souls with Baba right now. Uh, I could. Um, I I have a small comment. Um, thinking of the role of the avatar, the the mother of the avatar, and I'm remembering. Um, Erich, when uh, when Baba um, revealed that Gaimai, Erich's mother, um, would be the mother of the next avatar, Erich said, no, no, please, Baba. He literally begged Baba um, to take that role away from his beloved mother. Um, because it was so filled with pain and challenge and and difficulty and baba you know just shook his head it's like nope it's you know it's already planned and you know um it's you know he that was that will be the fate of guy mai in 700 years um but I, I remember Erich's really heartfelt reaction uh, when he would share about it, uh, that he really understandably did not, you know, it's, well, as, as we're all saying, there's so many different aspects to it, but it definitely has great pain um, of, on different levels that's involved with that unique, but must be so amazing role to play for for anyone. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, <clears throat> that's kind of why um, I asked Jim Meyer to open with the song "Oh Mary," because each one of the uh, mothers of the Avatar are in some form weeping. Um, expressing the suffering of their of their role as mother of the avatar and that um, the avatar lives forever so it's a blessing that the, that um, each of the mothers of the avatar have had to bring that into existence for for us to have the God man in our presence. Well, I'll just ask Karen if she has anything else she'd like to share. And I think Jim had a song if he's there. You're still muted, darling. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, I just muted you again. <laughs> Go ahead. You have to unmute. Do it now i can do it okay can you hear my voice all yes. right so i do have a few things one is that i do remember as judy mentioned being in mondeley hall and um mani someone might have asked but and she spoke for a long time about her mother and it was a very sweet time um all the stories she shared were very loving and very beautiful. I can't remember things that specific. Um, I do remember, as Judy mentioned, the story about the locked cupboard. Whether she told it at that time or I heard it another time, I can't recollect. But I do remember that. And, and, and it was a very special time because, you know, we were in Mondeley Hall for so many times. And then to remember Mani talking about her mother was very sweet. I did learn a lot from this little booklet. To read my book that I and then we also have this one share matching Sherry Archie. So quite interesting, but I will share something more personal. And that is that I think it was the last time that we were in Maribad and we went to um, the twins who never met their grandmother, Shereen Mai, 
nor did they meet their grandfather who died many um, years before that. Um, when they have a condo in Mayher Glory, very close to the NPR. And it's beautiful condo and it's beautifully furnished and decorated by, by, um, um, by them. And um, when you walk in on the left-hand side, there is a, um, there are two pictures, two beautifully framed pictures. And one is of Sherry R. G. and the other is of Shireen Mai. And um, looking at them, I remember sitting there uh, realizing that those are pictures for them of grandma and grandpa. So I, and I just wanted to share that. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, Karen, thank you. All right, well, anyone else? This is it, if you wanna, Judy, did you have something else? Yeah, I'll, since since there aren't a lot of folks coming forth, I I have very fond memories of Monty speaking about um, <clears throat> her uh, about her mother <laughs> and her frustration in that that Baba John was you know taking away her son marijuana. Um, and or it was Merog in those days, um, but and and she was really she was angry. She was just plain angry at Baba John, and so she would go out to Baba John, you know, over to Baba John's seat, which was actually very close to where they lived um, in ba in Baba House or Pumpkin House. It would have been Pumpkin House in those days. Um, and you know to to tell her off and and tell her to leave her son alone and give her back to to uh to Shireen Mai and <clears throat> and that would be sort of how she was going over very frustrated and so forth and she'd get there and Shireen Mai would would just charm her oh mother it's so you know so wonderful you've come and 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 she'd ask about this and she was so uh adept <laughs> uh baba john was at at just totally pulling the rug out from under shireen mai and her anger every single time and and turning her into the sweet her whole sweet aspect and them sharing as as karen mentioned in her bio um, sharing about those unique experiences um, in Persia and and so forth, and and then then there you know she oh oh it's time oh you've got to go home for you know and oh yes and Shreem I would kind of wake up from from this lovely sharing that they were doing together and yes I've got to get back to whatever it was next and and then she go back home or wherever she was going and all of a sudden she'd realize I didn't I didn't succeed again she tricked me again and and uh anyway Monty had such a beautiful way as you all know of of sharing these stories I can't begin to do justice to it um but it was quite delightful that you know that that loving trickery of of um Baba John to keep marijuana on the track of becoming, you know, uh, the unveiling uh, and integrating uh, Baba's consciousness uh, so that he could perform his, his role as avatar. Um, but anyway, and, and every time she felt tricked and I, it really actually is what comes to mind that's never come to mind before is Lucy with the football and Charlie Brown every time. Um, but at any rate, it, and but remembering Monty, um, who, right, Monty and Erich, two greatest storytellers of, you know, I've ever met. Um, and Monty, particularly delightful. So I have that. Jay Baba. 
That was great, Judy. Thank you. Jay Baba. Beautiful. Miss Elizabeth. Hi there. I, I got here a little late because I had some other things to do, but I wanted to remind people of the film that um, the video that Joe DeSabatana did on Shireen Mai's life, which really is an excellent way to get a taste of what she was like. And the other thing I wanted to, it's on Bobby YouTube. Um, the other thing is um, the, the whole idea of this mothering and what, what is the mother of God like? And um, for some reason, uh, Julian of Norwich has been brought to my attention in the past two weeks. And of course, she was the anchoress in Norwich, England, between, um, well, she, she lived from 13, I think, 43 until about 14, 16. She was the first woman um, author and first woman theologian in English writing. And she... Um, she got sick when she was about 30 and she almost died. And um, she had these visions of God, of Jesus. And um, her writings are now known as the, Revel the Revelations of Divine Love. So, you know, I was really interested in what she was saying. I had read about her in a historical novel and kind of looked at it a few years ago, but I looked at it again and on Wikipedia, you can actually see what some of the revelations were. And one of them has to do with Mary. That's the whole point of this. The mother of God. And she got to know what Mary's essence was, which I thought was very interesting. Um, you know, I probably would have to find a book. You can get it from a library. Uh, and I think I checked it out once before, but I need to review it. But um what, what is the essence of the one that becomes the mother of God? It was some special thing. And she also um, talked about Jesus handing her a hazelnut. And to me, it reminded me so much of God Speaks. And she actually talked about, you know, Jesus saying to her that creation came out of love, like this hazelnut did. And that... Um, and she realized that God created out of love. He maintained it, sustained it out of love and ended it or transformed it out. So she was actually talking about the concept of Ishwar, even though she doesn't state it that way. But in any case, um, it, it's just very interesting what she said about divine love. And of course it's consistent with what Baba has said and the revelations about Mary and about mother of God, which I can't imagine that, that job, you know, that doing that role in the hierarchy. Che Baba. Che Baba Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you, beautiful. All right, well, I think we're kind of winding down and um, I think we could end with the song if Jim would like to do his, his um, song to close. Okay, so here's an interesting song. It's a stream of consciousness song. Um, and it takes in a lot of what we're talking about. So this is fairly new. This is called Mare Baba's Ocean. Well, I got the call in Mondeley Hall that my visa was accepted. It was revealed to me by my inner TV that I'd never be rejected. Well, I knew what to do. I packed my canoe and paddled out and ignored the world's commotion I paddled out and gave a shout on my way across Maribaba's ocean Oh, I passed the place of time and space 
and headed for deeper waters and there was no need for excessive speed i was secure within my quarters and there on the shore was souls galore some waved and some stood at attention i sang a song and paddled on my way across mayor bobba's ocean Somewhere near noon, as I hummed a tune about the beloved and his lovers, I became aware in that harmonic air I was surrounded by many others. On my left and my right, in the bright sunlight, I saw a multitude in deep emotion. There were saints and sinners, losers and winners, all on our way across Mayor Bobba's ocean. And from my canoe, I saw Monty and Pendu lost in love's deep conversation. They smiled at me, and I felt with glee, just like a sadhu in Samadhi meditation. I saw Erich and Adi looking wise and free as they beamed in perfect devotion. And Mansari too said, how do you do you do on our way across Mayor Bob's I saw Padre and Eric Nadell, they were laughing like hell as Mohammed the Must was bending over. He was slapping the water as if he could slaughter all illusion and disorder. Well, I smiled a lot at Tom Riley and Lynott discussing the art world's promotion. All oh, were glad to be on that peaceful sea on our way across Mayor Bobba's ocean. There was Darwin and Jean and Sherry R and Shereen and Norena, Elizabeth and Gorm. I saw Frank and Irene and Mayhera the Queen most radiant as God's number one lover and looking equally pretty was our own Miss Kitty seemingly in perpetual motion she was arm in arm with Francis Brabazon all the way across Mayor Bobba's ocean Since there is no time, everything's just fine. As I travel towards life's final destination, all my friends and me throughout eternity will unite in love's total consummation. No gain or loss can derail the course of the ego's inevitable erosion. Soon we'll all be free of our own imagery Drowned in Mayor Bobba's divine ocean
Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's going to say it. I know. Sublime <laughs> and delightful at the same time. I don't know how you did it. Just beautiful. Lovely, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Anybody so been, you know, we've been seeing so many of our dear friends go, go on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy for them. Yeah. I realized that when Bob Brown left um, almost 30 years ago, that he got it and he didn't have to hang around anymore. <laughs> I, on the other hand, looks like I'm going to be greeting se severe old age. <laughs> <laughs> You won't be alone. <laughs> you know, plenty of companions. Yeah. Well, let's have a moment of silence if we could together. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Ruthie. Yeah, and your beautiful slideshow. And that, that it's whatever gives us an excuse to get together and celebrate Mayor Baba and his love and however it manifests. So lovely. <laughs> thank you. Jay Baba. Jay, Baba, everyone. Baba, Karen, thanks again for the bio. That was very enlightening. <clears throat> Beautifully done. Thanks. And for everyone who shared and for everyone who listened. And for Jim for coming on board and doing a few musical tunes for us. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. Thank you. Jay, Baba. And for Shireen being the cause for it all, mother of the avatar. Green my yes. <laughs>